Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how we can install NA10 on AWS EC2. So I'm already logged into AWS and here in the search box, we can search for EC2 and you can see EC2 virtual servers in the cloud option available here. So let's go ahead, click on that. And then we are going to click on launch instances. So either you can click on launch instances from here or otherwise you can also just click on instances and then there will be an option on the top right side. Uh, which will be actually launch instances as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here on the launch instance and then we are just going to call it uh, NA10 demo and here in the operating system you can choose the operating system which you like. I'm just going to go ahead choose Ubuntu and then just scroll down and here in the instance type you can choose the instance which you want. Uh, T3.micro has you can see two vCPUs, one GIB memory. So this is actually good enough if you just want to go ahead and do some R&D work like just want to quickly explore what are the things available in NA10. But let's say if you are going to run heavy production related workflows. So in that case I would recommend you can switch to T2.large. T2 dot large is actually going to be a little faster as well and you can see of course it is having two virtual cpus as well but the memory is quite higher so i'm going to go ahead and actually use t2 dot large because it's going to be a little faster and then in the key pair login if you don't really have a key pair login you can just click on create new key pair and then it is going to go ahead and give you a private key you can just use that private key to log into the server. Now in this case, I already have a private key uh, or key pair basically available. So I'm just going to select this one. Now, since this tutorial is not really related to AWS, so I'm not going into a lot of details of AWS, but it's going to be quite straightforward. So you just need to follow along what I have been showing you and then everything is going to be okay. Now here in the create security group, we can allow SSH traffic. We need it so we can log into the server. And apart from this, we can also allow HTTP or HTTPS if you need uh, or otherwise for now it's quite good. You can just leave it as it is. I'm going to show you once the security group is created, we are going to allow some port, uh, which is 5678. That is where NA10 runs on. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And for the volume, uh, how much storage you need. So by default, NA10 is actually not really uh, storage heavy. So 8 GB, 30 GB, whatever you feel like is good enough. So in this case, let's go ahead, just give it 20 GB. Uh, I think this is quite good enough. And then everything else is quite okay. Now, just in case you uh, actually want to reduce the cost and you don't really care about uh, running this instance forever. So in that case, you can actually go into advanced details and then just scroll down. And here you should be able to see something called uh, purchasing options. And here you can go ahead, select spot instances now spot instances actually it can get auto terminated when there is high demand on aws but let's say you just want to learn how to install it on ec2 and after that you don't really care about it in that case you can go ahead uh, select spot instances the prices of spot instances is generally 60 to 70 percent cheaper so that's the reason i'm just going to go ahead and use this and now everything else is quite okay let's go ahead click on launch instance it's going to take probably a minute before making the server ready so let's go ahead wait for some time and in the meanwhile, I'm just going to open command prompt. So I'm just going to do CMD here, hit enter. And then this is the command prompt which has been opened. Let's maximize it. Let's go back to EC2. And here you can see it is saying successfully initiated launch of instance. So launch of instance doesn't really mean instance has started. So I'm just going to click here on this instance. And now here, if you see, we can see the details. You can see the instance state has changed to running. So it means now we will be able to log into EC2. Here you can see the public IP address. So this is the IP address we will need to log into our server. So let's go ahead, copy this. And then we are going to go to command prompt. And here I'm going to paste this IP address, which I copied. Then we are going to to write ssh hyphen i and after hyphen i you need to provide the location of the private key which you just downloaded by clicking on create new key pair so here i know actually i have kept a private key at this variable location so i'm just going to do ssh private key and then if you create an ubuntu operating system like i did in that case username is going to be ubuntu so i'm just going to write ubuntu at the rate and if you hit enter now, it should be able to let you log in. It's asking whether you trust it. I'm just going to uh, say yes. And then it's going to let us log in. So you can see right now we are logged in. I'm just going to clear the screen once. And if you do PWD, you can see right now you are at this location. If I do who am I, of course, you can see we are logged in as Ubuntu. And we can switch to root user now. So I'm just going to do sudo space su space hyphen and hit enter. Now you have logged in as a root. 
So if you do who am I now, you can see now you switch to root and now we are going to install Docker. So now we are on to the official documentation of uh, Docker and we are going to see what are the steps which we can follow in order to install Docker on Ubuntu. So first of all, it's just talking about the operating system requirement, which is fine. It's saying we can actually uninstall all the old versions and for that we can run this command. So I'm just going to copy this and go back to our server, just paste it, hit enter. So let's say in case, you know, whatever, if it has uh, old Docker packages, anything which is related to Docker, is, it has actually uninstalled all of those things. And now we are going to follow the steps of installing or basically doing a clean setup again. So now we need to run this set of commands. So I'm just going to go ahead, copy this and just paste it, hit enter. Okay, so looks like it has run. Okay, so it has just set up Docker's APT repository and now we can just go ahead, copy this, paste it here and it is going to actually install Docker and Docker Compose as well. So it's asking for the confirmation. Let's click Y to confirm it. All right, so now Docker has been installed. I'm just going to go ahead, clear the screen again. We can now write Docker hyphen hyphen version. And if it gives you output, it means Docker has been successfully installed. You can also do Docker hyphen compose hyphen hyphen version, uh, just in case you want to see whether Docker compose is available as not. Uh, so in this case, if you want to install Docker Compose, you can follow this. But uh, for this tutorial, which I'm going to show you, we don't really need Docker Compose. So we are actually good if you already have Docker installed. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and move on to the steps of installing NA10. So now we are going to follow official documentation of NA10, which describes how we can install or run it actually as a Docker container. So first thing we are going to create a volume. Now what it is going to do is it is going to create a volume. So when you stop the Docker container or you terminate it, you don't really lose the data. So let's go ahead, run only the first command. I'm going to paste it here, hit enter. And now you can see Docker volume has been created. In case you want to see the Docker volume, you can do Docker volume LS. And here you can see now we do have a volume which is called N10 data. So this is quite good enough. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. In the next step, it is telling us that we can run Docker container. And for that one, we are going to use Docker run command hyphen IT is going to basically make it uh, interactive, which we don't really need it. And hyphen RM is basically saying, if you quit or basically if you stop this Docker container, it is going to remove this uh, container. So this is also something which we don't really need for now. But uh, for now, let's do one thing. I'm just going to copy paste the same and then I'm going to just make little changes later on. So for now, let's go ahead, copy this complete second line and we are going to paste it here. Just hit enter and it is going to pull the image. So right now it doesn't really have this N10 image, so it is going to pull the and at an image from Docker repository, which is from this location. And then it is going to run the image. So once it is running, basically we call it container. So we are going to call it, okay, we are running an at container. And here you can see uh, the speed of download. It is actually a little slow. I expected it to be a little faster, but for some reason it's slow, that's okay. All right, everything is okay. Now you can see it is saying that an at is running and it is accessible here. So it's going to say it is accessible on local host, but we are going to actually use public IP address to access it. So let's go ahead, go back to AWS instance, which we created. And here you can see this is the public IP address. So if I paste it here and then we can do colon and the port, which is 5678. And if I hit enter, ideally it should have worked and we should have been able to log in. But if you are running it on AWS, what AWS does it, it doesn't really allow any traffic to connect to your EC2. Okay, this is for the protection or security purposes. Otherwise, anyone is going to basically try to log into your EC2 system. Okay, so this is this is how it is uh, going to protect it. So what we need to do is we need to go to security group. So if you just scroll down here and if you click on security, you are going to see there is a security group which is attached to it. And this is the one which got created automatically when we launched the EC2 instance. So I'm just going to right click here and going to open it in a new tab. And now here we are going to allow incoming traffic on 5678 port. And after that, we should be able to open up graphical interface of NA10. So here you can see we are going to click on edit inbound rules. And let's go ahead, click on edit inbound rules. We are going to click on add a new rule. We are going to say custom TCP and port is going to be 5678. And we are going to allow it from all the system. Now, just in case you want to allow it only from your laptop, you can actually provide uh, that IP address here as well. 
but for now I'm just going to choose this first one so this means you are allowing to connect on this port 5678 from any system or any computer available in the world so now let's go ahead click on save rules and then this this is going to probably take 10 seconds and then you'll be seeing that these changes are going to reflect so now we can just go here and you can probably hit enter again or refresh it from here and now you can see it is going to launch n8n workflow now here you can see it is saying that our n8n is actually supposed to be running on https but we are running on http now if we want to run it on http it says we should also set the environment variable n8n secure cookie to false so let's go ahead copy this and i'm going to click on Control c or basically press Control c and then it stops this docker container and then we are going to provide an environment variable so we can do hyphen e and then we can paste this equal to false hit enter and it's going to run again so i made a mistake here we actually have to type hyphen e uh, after maybe hyphen v so i'm just going to copy this and let's remove it from here and we are going to i'm just going to type it before hyphen v so i'm just going to paste it here and then we can hit enter and now docker container is running again let's go to let's go to n8 n again and then we can just refresh this and now you can see it has given us n8 n interface here you can just provide your email address so i'm just going to provide my email address first name last name and whatever password which you want to set up and that's it you can actually ignore this getting started you can ignore this as well so just click on skip and now you can see you are successfully logged into n8 n if you want to create a new workflow you can click on this plus icon click on workflow and then it is going to take you to this interface where you can go ahead and create the work so i'm going to show you how to create various automation workflows in our upcoming lessons if you have any questions or queries do let me know in the comment box if you like the video do not forget to mention thanks in the comment box and i'm going to see you again in the next lesson